Hey guys, it's Dr. Pachangan here again. Uh, we're getting back into some more calculus review stuff. Uh, last time we talked about limits and all those fun limit properties of when we can factor things out, when we can look at limits at infinity. Today we're going to talk about our second major topic that we talked about at the beginning of the year um, in Unit 1, which was continuity. So just as a review, there were three major conditions for continuity for continuousness of a function. And so number one was that our function is defined at a certain place x equals a. So what we're looking at for continuity is we're looking at continuity here at a point. Like, is our function nice and smooth and continuous? The first thing we need to have is the function to be defined at the certain point we're looking at. Um, we can also say that like f of a is defined. If we plug in that value into our function, uh, our x value of a into our function, it's going to be defined. Our second thing is that we need to know that the limit as we approach this value of our function has to exist. So that generally means that we have to look at the right and the left hand side limits and make sure that they're the same thing to make sure the limit exists. Um, so we're going to often be dealing with piecewise functions when we do these problems. And then lastly, if those two things are defined and exist, our function is continuous if the function's limit as we approach that value of a is equal to the function value at that point. So the function has to approach the same value from both sides, and then at that point, the function also has to be defined there, and they have to have the same value to have a nice, smooth, continuous curve. Uh, for example, just like a graph-wise, my example of continuity is, is it a function where I can just draw it without picking up my pencil? So is it a nice, smooth, continuous curve with no holes, jumps, asymptotes, etc. So graphically, it's a lot easier to see kind of continuity, but we don't often have a graph. So let's look at it algebraically, then we want to figure out if this function is continuous at x equals 3. So we want to look at this particular value. And we want to show all of our steps and be sure to justify at the end. We're going to have a justification statement. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is prove that the function is defined at that point, that f of a exists. So we want to figure out what is f of 3. Looking at this continuous function, it's defined as this radical function when x is greater than or equal to 3, and this quadratic function when x is less than 3. If I want to be plugging in this value, I need to be looking at where it's equal to 3, which is this bottom bar right here, which tells me that I need to plug in 3 into the first function, because that is where the function is defined at 3. Here it's just when it's less than 3, not where it's defined. So you should get end up getting the square root of 16, which we know to be 4. And so that is defined. So we can go ahead and put a little check mark there. Our function is defined at that point. We meet condition number 1. Condition number 2, remember, involves us having to have the limit existing. So what that means is I need to look at both the left and the right hand limits. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left of a function, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of the function. So I need to look at both these limits. Because my, my function is piecewise, on either side of 3, I have two different functions. So if I'm approaching 3 from the left, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of this function, I want the values where x is less than 3. So I want to be looking at this piece right here where x is less than 3. This is where I want to look when I'm looking at 3 from the left. OK, so I need to find the limit of this function, x squared minus 5. But now I can just go ahead and direct substitute. And I can go ahead and plug in. As I get closer to 3, I just want to plug in that value of 3 which should give me 9 minus 5, which is 4. Cool. If I'm looking at the second function, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, I want to use this one here, this piece, 
because that's when I'm approaching values that are greater than three, x greater than three. So three from the right, I'm looking at the function square root of x plus 13, but I go ahead and plug in my value of three again, because I'm getting really, really close to that value. And I get square root of three plus 13, which is the square root of 16, which equals four. Cool. So we see then that the full limit, the limit as x approaches three of this function is equal to four and it exists. So our function is, our limit equals four and it exists. We now see though that our limit function is the same as our function value up here. So that satisfies our third piece that up here where the limit value has to be equal to the function value. So for three, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little check mark here because we can just see that right away. But what do we have to write to be super safe here and to fully justify our answer? Well, the limit statement that I'm gonna write is I'm gonna say f of x is continuous at x equals three because of some things here, because one, f of three is defined the limit as x approaches three of f of x exists and the limit as x approaches three of f of x equals f of three. So I need to make sure I state all three of these pieces here to make sure I fully justified my answer to show that it is continuous. Great. Let's go ahead and look at an example here. If you need to pause for a second um, to get more notes there, feel free to do so. You can pause these videos. I'm gonna go ahead and move on though. <clears throat> So if I wanna look at a function like this, if I can actually get it working out here. No, okay. So if I wanna find the value of C that makes this function continuous, what I need to do is I need to match both sides of the function. So match both sides of the function here, H of X at X equals three. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm matching both sides. This is a really complex function. I've got this uh, really crazy fraction over here, and I've got this easier one here. I need to figure out what value of C though is gonna make it continuous, because I don't know what this value of C is. So I wanna match both sides, so I wanna set them equal to each other. X squared minus two X minus three over x squared minus five x plus six. And I want to, that to be the same thing as x squared minus cx minus two at x equals three. So I wanna make them match at x equals three. That means I wanna plug in three into this function. I'm gonna go ahead and skip some of this because I know that you can do this well in your calculator. If you plug three into this function, you'll eventually get zero over zero here. And then you'll get three squared is nine minus three times C is three uh, C minus two. The issue here is that this came up. When I plugged in three, I got zero over zero, kind of like last time. This tells me that I probably can factor something else to help me out. So I want to do that like last time. So I want to try and factor this. I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side over here. If I factor this expression over here, I should get x minus three, x plus one, and I should get x minus three, x minus two. So this is how this part gets factored. And it's still gonna be equal to that nine minus three C minus two. I can go ahead and cancel these out though. You can remove that discontinuity. And I get X plus one over X minus two 
equals, let's see, nine minus two is seven minus three C. Great. Uh, and then I wanna evaluate this at X equals three. So I get three plus one, which is four, three minus two, which is one. So four over one is just gonna be four, seven minus three C. Oh my goodness, we're almost there. And then I can solve this and I get four minus seven is negative three equals negative three C. So C should give me a value of one to make that function continuous. Both sides match up at that part. Cool. Lastly, we're gonna see one a little bit different just to wrap up. Uh, we've got two different values now of A and B to make the function continuous everywhere because there's a jump, there could possibly be a jump here at negative one. There could possibly be a jump here at three. So I wanna look at both pieces. So I'm gonna do both things. I'm gonna try and match at x equals negative one. And I also need to match up the values, match uh, at x equals three. So when I wanna match at x equals one, I need to match these two functions that are on either side of negative one. So I'm gonna set these two functions equal to each other. Two equals ax plus b, but I wanna match them at the specific value of negative one. So I get two equals a negative one for x plus b, or two equals negative a plus b. That's one equation. I also need to match at x equals three. So I need to match on either side of three, which is these bottom two functions. And I wanna match the ax plus b and the negative two. So ax plus b has to be negative two, but when x equals three. So a times three plus b equals negative two and three a plus b equals negative two. I've got two equations with two unknowns, so I'm gonna solve them like a system of equations. I'm gonna do that over here. So I wanna solve this system of equations, two equals negative a plus b, and negative two equals three a plus b. I put them all on the same side, so I flip the second one. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract the second equation from the first. So I get two minus negative two, which is four, equals negative a minus three a, which is negative four a. The b's cancel out, b minus b. So my a value is negative one. Then I can go ahead and substitute this a value back into any one of my equations. Let's just go ahead and use this top one two equals negative a plus b. Go ahead and move this down a little bit. When two equals negative a plus b, my a value is negative one. Negative negative one is positive one, so two equals one plus b, or b should be positive one. So those are the trickiest ones where they gave you two different things, but again, two different values to find, but again, you're just matching it up at each of those locations. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. You'll have some example problems to work on in the classwork and a quiz to take today. Um, should work a lot like last time where you're uploading some of your work. Um, this one, I believe, just has uploaded work, not actually uh, free response or multiple choice questions because these ones do not lend well to uh, just plugging an answer. I wanna see your justifications in your work. Okay. Cool, so uh, watch the video again if you need to, slow down, pause, take a break. Uh, I will see you possibly in office hours later, uh, or if you've got this, I won't see you. I'll see you again next Tuesday for another video where we start up on derivatives again. Bye guys, have a good one.